Hey guys, it's Mr. Bison, and today I'm going to be ranking all of the Further Maths Options modules from S tier down to D tier. And of course, it's just my opinion, but I'm going to try and give you some really important pieces of information that might help you decide which ones you want to study, or maybe you'll be really pleased that you've got the particular combination that you're actually using. Now, I've been wanting to do this ever since I'd studied all eight of them and took exams in them in the summer that's just gone in summer 2024. And I've also seen that there's another YouTuber called R2 Drew2, excellent channel with some really, really good content in there, who has also ranked the modules. I'm going to watch his video after I have done this because I didn't want to be influenced by his opinions. And you'll also see here, I've done a bit of a ranking of my hairstyles as well, because I've definitely had some questionable hairstyles. If you want to skip through this and go straight to the modules, just skip in another 30 seconds from here and you'll probably be at that right point. S tier has got to be the mullet. I loved it when I had that curly bit at the back, but I haven't had that for a while. I got rid of the mullet after it became very, very trendy. I thought maybe it's time to get something different. A tier, I've had loads of different colors. I think this is probably my favorite color. It's like pinky peach, nice and short. Plus I look really young there. So that's my A tier. B tier is bang in the middle. I've gone with my skin fade. You just can't go wrong with a skin, skin fade. And that's just me on results day, that video, that little clip there. And then we go down to the bit where if you get a module down here, we're not going to be so happy. But in C tier is my horrible Ronald McDonald red haircut that just, it doesn't look good. It makes my skin look really pale. I look awful. <laughs> it's so bad. And then the last one, which is the D tier, the worst one. You're probably thinking, why has he put that one as the worst one? This is from my Everything to Memorize for Pure Maths. It was a video that I released, like just when I had like maybe 100 subscribers. And it has now been viewed by over a quarter of a million people. And I have the worst fringe you could ever have imagined because I had a spot bang in the middle of my head. And every time I look at this video, which is one of my most popular videos, I'm like, why did I do that to my fringe to cover the spot? Anyway, it's good though. It's good it's been viewed by so many people. So there's a few different ways I'm going to be ranking the modules. I've thought about how challenging they are, how enjoyable they are, and almost how much also how much content there is, because there's a varying amount of content between these. And like I said, this is my opinion. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this in the comments, whether you agree or disagree. Now, I'm going to go through them in kind of the, the traditional order, which is starting off with pure to begin with. Now, FP1 that we've got here, FP1, as I discuss FP1 and think about where it's going to go, in terms of enjoyability, I'd say it's probably quite enjoyable. It's around sort of A or B tier that we've got here. There's some really interesting parts like conic sections. Then there's some other bits to do with like vectors that I think is really interesting. But there's also some quite challenging parts of it as well. And I'd say the reason I'm going to be putting this down probably in C tier is because this is probably the biggest module in terms of content. I think there's nine chapters, which is a lot of new content. And one of the chapters has got like three subparts. There's like the via Strauss substitution. There's some stuff with limits. It's a really, really big module. And I actually think it's one of the more challenging ones that we have there. I'd say probably my highlight of that is probably conic sections. Um, and another thing that I think is trickier about FP1 is that it relies on a lot of maths content and further maths content. So it can't just kind of be studied independently. Okay, then I'm going to look at FP2 next. FP2 has a slightly lower content demand. I'd say it's probably a medium amount of content that we've got there. And the thing I like about this in terms of enjoyability, I'm probably going to be putting it around the A tier FP2, is because there are some really fresh, interesting concepts in this. There's something called group theory and something called number theory, which feels totally unlike anything that you've studied in maths before. And I really, really like that. However, it is challenging. I didn't want to put it in S tier because the integration techniques from it are so, so difficult. And it does also rely on a lot of things from core pure and it does rely on some things from maths as well. So it's not necessarily the easiest one. And unfortunately, to be able to do FP2, you have to have done FP1. So I don't know if it's necessarily my favorite combination out there, even though it has some of my favorite content across all of A-level further maths. Okay, next thing I'm going to have a look at is further stats. I'm going to have a look at further stats one here. And I'm kind of deciding between these two. It's definitely got less content than FP1. It's definitely sort of a medium amount of content for this. And it will definitely deepen your understanding of statistics from normal maths. Um, basically, it just introduces some new distributions and does loads more like hypothesis testing. 
So the thing that I like about this is it's a lot of wordy questions and you have to kind of decode what's going on in those wordy questions. But if you don't like wordy questions, it's probably not going to be the kind of module for you. I'd say the most challenging part of it is quality of tests. The least challenging is probably discrete random variables. But you do need to have covered some stuff from normal stats, like normal distribution. I'm probably going to put this one as probably an A tier. I think it's probably an A tier because I really like Further Stats 1. It made me enjoy statistics from normal maths like a lot more. Further Stats 2, this is a really interesting one. I really, really liked Further Stats 2. It's definitely choosing between these two modules. Again, it's like a medium amount of content and it definitely deepens your understanding of stats and of, of Further Stats 1 as well. And it then introduces these distributions where you're kind of like taking samples from populations. Um, again, there's loads of wordy questions. You decode them and then figure out what it's going to be. The most challenging bit is probably from chapters five to seven. Um, and chapters one and two is just really, really boring. And I think because of chapters one and two, which is correlation and regression, it's going to be a B tier kind of module. It's in my skin fade kind of section because it's good, but it was uh, it's a challenging module as well. OK, then we're going to go on to further mechanics one. Now, I'm not going to spend any time with where I put this. This is definitely going straight into S tier further mechanics one is my favorite module. It's my favorite one to teach. Uh, it's my favorite kind of content. I would say it has a good level of challenge, but it the thing that's the best about Further Mechanics 1 is it has a really, really small amount of, of content. It's only got energy, elastics, and collisions. And it does a lot of those topics in a lot of detail. So the upside is that if you get those concepts and you understand them, then it's plain sailing. I guess there is a downside if you find those concepts challenging, you're kind of stuck with those concepts. Um, it also deepens your understanding of forces and normal mechanics. Um, I'd say the most challenging part is collisions. The least challenging part is probably work energy and power, which is an AS topic. But I just love this module. I find that when like the concepts click, you're just in a really, really solid position and you can just enjoy, yeah, enjoy like getting a lot better at a particular area of that mechanic section. And then Further Mechanics 2, I'm also going to be putting this really high. I think Further Mechanics 2, I'm choosing between S and A. I think it's more challenging than Further Mechanics 1, which means I'm probably going to drop it down into the A tier that we've got here. In terms of the amount of content, this is also one that has a much smaller amount of content. There are only three concepts, really. There's circular motion, centers of mass, and then dynamics kinematics, which is basically just a lot of calculus. So you do sort of return to the same topics again and again and again, which really does make you become a lot better at those. The most challenging part is probably the end section of circular motion where you're doing like the vertical circular motion. Uh, at least challenging is probably the calculus stuff because by that point, you've probably got quite good at calculus from Corpio 1 and Corpio 2. And then I would say you do have to be careful because some of the Further Mechanics 2 concepts rely on Further Mechanics 1. So you just got to be a bit careful about the audio that you study this in. OK, I'm now going to be having a look at <laughs> decision one. OK, well, it's for sure down here for me. Decision one, I've just never connected very well with decision one. The thing with decision one that is going to put it in the D tier for me, where I had my fringe covering up the spot on my forehead, is that there is a large amount, a really large amount of conceptually like brand new content. And I'd say the reason it's going down low is all of the content appears quite sort of innocent and simple at first glance, but they're always asking about the the, con the concepts and the topics in really thought provoking ways in the exams. It's a really modern area of maths. So it's got li links to computer science and to algorithms. But there's some really like fiddly challenging areas, particularly to do with the simplex method. I know that's something that people find really challenging. It's very easy to make a mistake. But then there's some really boring, easy bits like the bubble sort, the quick sort, bin packing, stuff that, again, seems quite innocent on the surface. But I know they've often asked questions that have been quite challenging on it. A good thing about it that means maybe I should put it up to maybe a C is that it doesn't rely on any content from further maths or normal maths. So you can just get started on it immediately and you don't have to worry about that. But it's very detailed. If you make a little mistake in one of these algorithms, it can have big, big impacts on the rest of the question. I think it's the one this year it had the lowest grade boundary for an A star. Or if it wasn't the lowest, it was right down there. Whereas FP1 had an incredibly high boundary for an A star in 2024. It was 72 out of 75. Way, way, way lower for D1. 
And then the last module that we've got is D2. Now, you might be thinking I would probably put D2 down low somewhere as well. I'm actually thinking about whether D2 is either between A or B. It's probably between A or B. I'm probably going to put it in B. And the reason I'm going to put it in B is because it's got a smaller amount of content compared to D1. It's, I'd say it's probably like a medium amount of content that we've got there. And the algorithms in D2 are just way more interesting. They're kind of more fun. There's things like transportation problems and allocation problems. They've all got this kind of theme of like making decision making more efficient, which I just found really interesting having that kind of connection. Plus there's game theory. And I think game theory is an, an area that a lot of you would find, yeah, really intriguing and like something you want to know a bit more about what's hard about it why i didn't want to put it up in a is there's a lot of like linear programming just kind of like scattered throughout it and that can be quite tricky um there's also this thing called dynamic programming which i hated at first but then i've kind of really fallen in love with but again you can make like a mistake early on and it kind of like goes all the way sort of through the question can kind of make make you lose quite a lot of marks so it's got some of those things sort of in common with d1 that we've got there but i really loved in this part um the flows in networks if you ever get to that bit i find that part particularly interesting and again like d1 it's not really linked to anything the only thing it's linked to is some of the simplex stuff from d1 so um yeah you can kind of get started on it straight away so i think this is probably i'm pretty happy with this i'm pretty happy with my my best combo being f fm1 and fm2 but i also like further stats one as well so i think my normal combination i would recommend is probably further mechanics one and further stats one because it strengthens a lot of your understanding of normal stats and normal mechanics as well and i'm sorry to anybody who likes decision maths i do like it i did enjoy it but it's definitely the one that's lowest down. I think people will probably be surprised with FP1 being quite so low, but it's because it is huge in terms of stuff to memorize and in terms of how challenging that I think it is. Now, I've actually got a little summary of all of my thoughts on these particular modules um, so that you can kind of read through them and think about which one might be the right, the right kind of combination for you. I would love to know whether you agree, whether you disagree, um, particularly about the haircuts. And maybe there's some other hairstyles that should have been in there as well. It is what nearly the end of September. I hope you've had a, a good sort of first few weeks of studying as the new academic year. As always, let me know if there's anything that you need in the comments. Um, please make sure you're subscribed. If you're not, I'm trying to work my way towards 100,000 subscribers. I've just hit 60,000. So that would be awesome. And if you just came here to see the hairstyles and you stuck around to the end, then thank you so much. Okay, guys, I'll see you soon. Bye.